So the point of these solar distance experiment and the flat earth experiment is to show that we can start from a blank piece of paper, uh, work out the mathematics for two possible alternatives, uh, go through the calculations, obtain the equipment ourselves, and come up with answers to these fundamental questions that uh, don't require input from the government or to someone else to tell us what our point of view is. So. I've spent the last two weeks putting together the calculations for the solar distance experiment. They're posted online. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see them in this video and you can go to the, the address and get the actual calculations and uh, the Excel spreadsheet that has those calculations in it. So if you're interested to do that, uh, feel free to do it. If you have any comments on the, the quality or the the accuracy of the, the calculations. Please feel free to let me know. I'd appreciate to know of any errors prior to test date. The test date remains October 24. I've changed the times from 1 p.m. to 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. There's a list of exact times uh, in this video that uh, I intend to shoot the uh, direct direct uh, line to the sun from three different locations at the, the those times and if one of them happens to uh, be a, a case where I get three different shots in from from three directions I will consider the test a success. Uh, the logistics and the execution, the technical difficulty of executing it is uh, not simple but it is straightforward a uh, very high degree of accuracy is required. I think that uh, I have a two-second theodolite, <clears throat> which means that I have to change also the, the locations that I'm shooting from. I have to go uh, from Kentucky. I'll actually go to Michigan and, sh and shoot in from Michigan, and I'll have another shot from way out on, on the West Coast. So in order to, in order to work against the, the, the accuracy of the machine, I need to get further away from the point in Signal Mountain that we're shooting from also. So, anybody who wants to piggyback on this experiment and uh, turn their own angles on that date, I, I encourage that. Uh, enough said about that. When uh, you go through the uh, calculation set, I've put uh, a number of uh, pages up in front in this video and basically explains the mathematical procedure that, it, that I went through. It's not the only way to do it, but it's the only way that I knew to do it uh, to make it simple and uh, reduce everything to a single point in time, a single, single measurement uh, from three different directions. So there's three steps in the, in the calculation process. The first set is to input the data and convert to a Earth-centered, Earth-fixed Cartesian coordinate system. And I've done that by uh, starting with the data from the World Geodetic Survey 1984. It's a Department of Defense document. It gives all of the input parameters that we start from, assuming that there is an oblate spheroid model. Uh, I, I am prepared to take the third dimension of that curved surface out and make a a uh, two-dimensional flat disk uh, model for the calculations assuming that the signal mountain uh, test where I'm shooting the, the big frog and Oswald Dome mountains that those results would be flat also so I'm using the oblate spheroid model until I I know that the earth is flat I don't I don't really expect that to be the case, but, but uh, to start the calculations, the most difficult way is to uh, deal with the, the oblate spheroid model, which is what I've done. So the input comes from the Department of Defense document, and I've listed those, those input parameters there. The uh, conversion to uh, the Earth-centered, Earth-fixed coordinate system is explained in that defense document. It's very simple. Uh, three, uh, three equations are used. They're trigonometric functions. 
uh, and they're pretty simple and straightforward to go through. So we start with latitude and longitude and elevation. We, we construct a, uh, a spherical coordinate uh, uh, location which we take that and we convert it by the equations listed in the calculation set to uh, Cartesian coordinates that gives us the location of the point that we're shooting from uh, which will be a known point uh, coming off of USGS latitude, longitude, and elevation. We convert that location to a location vector which we start in step two We'll take that location vector, we're going to rotate it north in, by the zenith angle. We'll take the actual location vector, rotate that vector north towards the north pole by the zenith angle, zenith angle that we turn in the experiment. And then we're going to take that angle and we're going to rotate it around by the azimuth that, that we turn to the sun uh, in the 3D uh, you know, on the 3D coordinate system. So we, we take the location vector, we rotate it to the north, we rotate it around to the direction of the sun, and then we divide by the magnitude of that vector uh, to get a unit vector in the direction of the sun, which is what we need in, in step three. So step two is very difficult. Uh, you need to know linear algebra, which is a 400 level college course. Uh, that's your background for doing that. If if you know matrix multiplication, uh, working with matrices and vectors, you just simply take the matrix from Wikipedia, the rotation matrix, three-dimensional matrix, and uh, use that going through the multiplication process straightforward, and you come up with those equations that I have listed there. The third step is very easy. Uh, it has five uh, dot products that you have to calculate. Those are very simple to calculate. Uh, scalar product, if you look it up, uh, it's not hard to do. You have to calculate a vector from the, the location that you're shooting from over to the location vector for Signal Mountain. That's also very easy to do, and that's done in the calcs. Uh, and you end up, uh, in step three, you end up with two parameters that give you the actual distance to the sun. One is from the point in Signal Mountain and the other point is uh, the one that you're shooting from either in Michigan or out on the West Coast. So basically that's the, uh, the procedure that I went through. Um, let me know what you think about that. And I have two questions. One question for the Flat Earth people I've never been south of Quito, Ecuador, and I've never seen the Southern Cross. So my question is, if, if the Earth were flat, why can I not see the Southern Cross from Tennessee? <clears throat> the second question is for the oblate spheroid people. Uh, that question is, if you look at the lunar module, in the top half of that lunar module. And you know that you have to launch that thing to orbital velocity and steer and stabilize and have a little fuel extra, extra for your astronauts. Uh, how much fuel does that take? And where is it in the lunar module? I look at the, the craft and I think it's too small to have that much fuel in there. So if anybody knows the answer to that, I would, I would like to know how much fuel and what was the volume required to, to store that fuel. So this is about all I want to say about the, the preparation for the solar distance experiment. Uh, we'll carry it out on the, on the test date as planned. Uh, if you want to notify me that you'll be shooting in uh, as well, send the latitude, longitude, and elevation of the station you'll be shooting in and uh, the accuracy of the plate on your instrument and the precision in uh, seconds for your instrument. Uh, also appreciate to, uh, to know whether you're a flat earth person or a spherical earth person. 
So let me know uh, if you have any comments. I'll try to uh, uh, address those. And I want to say to everyone who has told me not to do this uh, verbally and uh, in, uh, in writing uh, through comments uh, that I've having done the calculations and seen uh, how straightforward they are and how sensitive they are to the input parameter. Uh, I'm doubling down on, on my level of interest in uh, getting, getting these results out to people. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video.